And happy Easter if you celebrate it. If not, I hope you're having a lovely spring weekend. I have been celebrating this holiday with decorating, baking, cooking and indulging. It's a tradition here in Sweden to bring in branches and hang decorative eggs and feathers. I also decorate with bunnies and wreaths. I have been looking forward to use our many Easter decorations for the house as it's the first spring living here. Fun fact, I used to run a store and cafe together with my mom and sister and when we closed up we got to bring home some of the interior such as winter and Easter decorations because they were out of season when we closed up. That is why I have lots of it. I didn't really use all of it this year because I'm hosting Easter at our house this year. I was afraid it would get crowded. But I also think that less is more sometimes if you focus on the details. We've had such a cold and long winter this year. Usually it would be much warmer outside and we would have started seeing more tree buds and flowers. I have some tulips and daffodils that I planted last fall to pop up, but not yet flowering. The weather has been overcast and rainy lately, but for Easter we got some sun and warmer weather.
It's the day before Easter and I am preparing some of the food beforehand. I am serving cold food, mainly canapes and a carrot cake. So I'm starting off with the cake and it's just a regular carrot cake recipe I'm sure you can find anywhere online. It turned out very moist and delicious. The frosting was made with cream cheese, lemon juice, lemon zest, butter and powdered sugar. I topped the cake with some chocolate eggs, walnuts and lemon balm. When planning and hosting dinner parties, lunches or holiday celebrations, I usually think of what's the most convenient but also luxurious. Easter food is mainly cold food here in Sweden, it's the same food that we serve on Christmas. But you can also break traditions by serving lamb and roasted potatoes for example. Or if the weather allows you could barbecue. I would have loved that and might do something like it next year. I know the more traditional Easter food is always appreciated and most of it is store-bought. I do like to cook from scratch, but I turn to convenience if there is a lot of people coming and you don't have much time. I could prepare most of it the day before and just assemble the day off. I did make homemade focaccia and of course the cake. Besides that, I ended up making cold smoked salmon rolls with horseradish cream cheese, herbs and black cabbage. Two different crostini, half of it topped with brie, walnuts and honey. The other one with goat's cheese, blueberries, rosemary and honey. A spoon full of sour cream, pickled herring, lemon zest, seaweed, caviar and chives. I also made a Swedish toast skagen, which is rye bread toast topped with a creamy mixture of mayo, sour cream, dill, shrimp and fish roe. It's the morning after, the day of hosting Easter lunch and I am starting the sourdough focaccia first thing in the morning to allow it to rise for a couple of hours and serve it fresh. I used 2 deciliters of sourdough starter, some honey and 650 milliliters of water. Mix together and then add the flour a little bit at a time. 
I always go by texture when making bread, but I ended up adding about 12 to 13 deciliters of flour. I let it rest for 30 minutes in the bowl and then I added two teaspoons of salt, mixed that in and then let it rise for another one and a half hours doing a stretch and fold with 30 minutes in between. In between stretchings with washed hands, of course, <laughs> I decorated the entry a bit. I planted some daffodils and pansies in my baskets. I foraged some branches to decorate with eggs and feathers. It really ended up so welcoming for the guests. But I'm going to stop talking and let you enjoy the bird songs. The branches are from a sallow tree and has these furry catkins, I think it's called. If you google goat willow, you will understand. I poured the dough into the oiled baking pan and let that rise while the oven was heating up to 230 degrees celsius. To create those classic focaccia holes you stick your fingers down on an angle and let the oil drip down. I used a rosemary and garlic infused olive oil. I then pressed down tomatoes in the holes and topped with olives, onions, rosemary and sea salt. I baked it for 10 minutes, then lowered the heat down to 200 degrees celsius and baked for another 30 minutes or so. It turned out humongous. <laughs> it served 11 people, plus I gave half of the rest uh, away to guests that couldn't make it. And then I kept half of that for ourselves, probably going to freeze it, but I would say that this recipe could serve 30 people. Perfect for a bigger party. I didn't press record, but I spritzed the cake. Here I am attempting in making the Skagen toast a bit fancier with this round cookie cutter but it was way too tedious so I decided to make them into triangles instead.
Thank you for watching. Again, I hope you're having a fantastic weekend and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.